general theme, re-engage your class to record a contagious Sunday school, continuing to communicate a contagious Christianity. It's too important. Christ said it. Times demand it. The world needs it. Jesus declared, I am sending you, according to John, the 20th chapter and the 21st verse. And he added, you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Acts 8, 1 and 8. For the last two years, many church doors have been closed. We have been confined in our homes. We have been hearing the word contagious all over the world. Cries are being made. Get fascinated. Stay home. Stay safe. Wear a mask. Wear two masks. Stay your distance. Stop the spread. The world has been swept up in a pandemic. We've been bombarded with warnings designed to prevent us from catching this highly commutable virus, contagious. In such an environment, there's no more troublesome thought than a fear that we might be contagious. Mark Mettenberg stated in his book, Contagious Faith, the following. Contagious isn't always a bad thing. It describes something irresistible, something you can't help but catch, and something you have the potential to spread. What about this word contagious? According to Miriam Webster's definition, contagious is to excite similar emotions and conduct in others and beliefs. What about a contagious Sunday school? What makes it happen? The following information is helpful to answer these questions. Writer Lowell E. Brown stated in his book, Sunday School Standards. The Sunday School is an exciting organization. It has a fantastic history and a challenging future. For over 200 years, the Sunday School has been a powerful instrument in God's hands to get people involved in life-changing Bible study and to equip and train them for ministry. Since this is recognized as Women History Month, the first American Sunday School was created by a former slave, a black woman in recognition of Kathy Ferguson, who was born in about 1774. We honor her this month. In 1793, when she was little more than a child herself, Ferguson started a Sunday school. She took 48 children into her home once a week to give them lessons and scriptures and in practical skills for life. She also did her best to find homes for them. Soon the pastor of her own church, Dr. John M. Madison, heard about Ferguson's work and offered her space in his basement. He also provided assistants who could provide the basic education that she 
still unable to read and write, could not. Under Ferguson's supervision, the Murray Street Sabbath School continued for 40 years. It was New York's first Sunday school. Kathy Ferguson died of cholera in New York in 1854. In 1920, the city of New York opened a home for unwed mothers and named it the Kathy Ferguson Home. There were times that tried her soul. However, because of her faith in God, the idea of Sunday school became contagious. Another focus on the importance of Sunday school title, What is the Purpose of a Sunday School? was printed in Spiritual Ray. It stated, Sunday schools render religious education to people of all age groups and serve as a platform for people to come together for a common noble cause. The term Sunday school is used to refer to the system where in religious education is rendered on Sundays by various religious congregations. The education imparted in Sunday schools is generally intended to promote Christian fellowship. One of the primary goals of a Sunday school is to evangelize the common people, thereby promoting the spread of Christianity. It aims at bringing people from different areas of society together. It aims at uniting the people under one common umbrella. The preaching of Jesus Christ are spread with common masses and they are encouraged to adhere to his principles. This has been a beautiful history of the Sunday School and has been passed down through the years. However, Sunday school teachers, in order for us to enhance our classes and make them become contagious, we must do better in three areas. One, Bible study. Two, fellowship. And three, outreach slash evangelism. Bible study slash application. Throughout its history, the Sunday school has met a need for getting people into the Word, studying the Word for themselves, applying Bible truths to their lives, and memorizing God's Word. As results, it has had a tremendous impact on individuals' lives and has influenced the course of nations. Society and the world have been changed. Fellowship. Biblical fellowship does not mean social events, which takes place in our fellowship halls of our church. Fellowship means carrying in and sharing in a partnership. As members of the body of Christ, we are partners in the life and work of Christ. As we need to share our lives with one another on a personal level, to have the kind of sharing and fellowship God wants for us, we must learn to relate to one another on a very personal level. This kind of sharing happens most often in small groups. That's why Sunday school is an excellent place for real fellowship. Merely organizing disciples into small groups will not automatically produce fellowship. But we, as mature Christians, and want to share care for one another. 
the fellowship of a small group will make it easier to reach out to others. Number three, outreach slash evangelism. The Sunday school has played an important role, not only in Bible study and fellowship, but also in outreach and evangelism. It has enlisted unbelievers in Bible study so they can come to know Christ as Savior, and it has involved believers in a systematic study of the Word so they can grow spiritually and reach out in ministry to others. As we evaluate our Sunday school, it's important to consider whether or not we have a good balance in all three of these areas. Sometimes people debate the question, which is the Sunday school most important role? Bible study, fellowship, or evangelism? Answering this question is like answering the question, which is more important to an airplane? Is left wing, is right wing, or is tail? The answer is that all three are essential. Sunday school teachers, we must reassess ourselves. There are principles we must articulate for our classes to become contagious. They are engage and know your audience. Two, choose a topic or a text. Three, don't teach, quote, on, teach, quote, that. Four, fix everything on a one page. Five, make no more than three points. Six, illustrate every single point. Seven, pre-write at least three Q and A prompts. Eight, keep it simple. Nine, make it interesting. Ten, don't always think in terms of a series. And eleven, Write your one page first. Change later if necessary. This was taken from a website called Church Growth. If you master these skills, and we have mastered the found, we have mastered the foundation of building an engaged Sunday school audience. Sunday school teachers, since the pandemic, we can expect change in our churches. According to writer Ben Brady in Lifeway on Wednesday, April 15, 2020, he wrote How to Adapt to Online Sunday School. Online Sunday School will be part of the new normal. When we return to the church and to the buildings, online worship and Sunday school will become the next great change. Today, because of COVID-19, the church is undergoing another kind of dispersion. God's people have been forced to scatter from church buildings and Sunday school classrooms and into cyberspace because of shelter in orders in our communities. Larger gatherings of people have been encouraged by local, state, and national levels to not to be held. Untold numbers of churches 
how quickly they moved online for worship. We may ultimately look back on this as a great movement in the church. God has used a terrible disease to make the gospel more accessible than ever before. Sunday school has now moved online to stay. Then Brady lists five tips to help us to be successful with online Sunday school. One, Bible study sessions must be shorter. Two, teachers must share screen and introduce images that enhance the study. Statement that he made is quite interesting. Sunday school teachers have rediscovered the adage that you cannot place new wine in old wine skins. Successful group leaders are going to do things in new ways as they guide their groups to study the Bible in virtual settings. And he continues with number three, teachers must work hard to keep people engaged. Four, use uh, the use of personal study guides is more important than ever before. And number five, Churches are wise to provide an ongoing online Bible study experience. Thus far, we have related contagious to the Sunday school. However, it is important to continue to communicate a contagious Christianity because it's too important. From Bill Hybert's book, Becoming a Contagious Christian, he states, The reason that most of us struggle to be contagious Christians is the fact, fear, uncertainty, and self-centered living get in the way of what God is trying to do through us. This is a matter of motive and must be overcome by developing God's heart for the lost. He continued by stating, to become contagious Christians, we need to have the proper motivation. Sharing the gospel because it is the right thing to do, or because we would have otherwise feel guilty is improper motivation. We need, first and foremost, God's heart. In the book of Acts, we find a great example of contagious Christianity. We read of the 120 praying in the upper room. When the Holy Spirit fell, soon 3,000 gave their hearts to Jesus. That is an example of rapid Christian contagion. Mark Mettenberg is quoted again. What if our faith were contagious? What if instead of quickly clinging to our relationship with Christ and succumbing to societal sentiment that faith should be private, we realize that faith is for sharing, that Jesus came not just for me or for you, but to be the savior of the world. And let me stop it, okay? Because I'm an English teacher, and I put me before you. Okay. I gotta go back and do that. Okay. Pick up wherever you want to. Right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. That Jesus came not just for you and me, but to be the savior of the world and that he wants us to share good news about him with others. To spread the word, according to Dr. Edward O. Williamson in his article, Making the Shift, Christian Education Ministry Goes Digital, 
in our National Christian Education Informer, December 2020 through January, February 2021. He stated, the Ministry of Christian Education has been thrust into digital age across our denomination. As the backbone ministry in the local church for children, youth, and adults, the traditional Sunday school classroom with a teacher meeting the students in an assigned local church has changed due to the pandemic. A writer, Jonathan Peterson, in an article in the Bible Gateway blog, second month, 10th day, 22, stated, the Bible instructs Christians to tell others about Jesus. Yet, modern research shows only 17% of churchgoers know what the term, the Great Commission means. Yes, the church doors are still closed in many places. Christians, we have a command, pandemic or no pandemic. Matthew 28, 19, 20 contains what has come to be called the Great Commission. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus gave this command to the apostles shortly before he ascended into heaven. And it essentially outlines what Jesus expected the apostles and others who followed them to do in his absence. Yes, the church doors are closed in many places. In light of the global pandemic, we as Sunday school teachers must want the word contagious to be positive as we communicate with others. We have received a precious gift, the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people, Jude 1 and 3. Jesus' words in the Great Commission reveal the heart of God who desires all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the faith. 1 Timothy 2 and 4. Okay. The Great Commission compels us to share the good news until everyone has heard. Like the servants in Jesus' parable, we are to be about the business of the kingdom, making disciples of all nations. He called his ten servants and delivered them two pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Luke 19, 13. Sunday school teachers, we have a charge to keep. These are the times that try our souls, according to Patrick Henry. We as Sunday school teachers must receive a different kind of training. We must follow 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. I will walk by faith, even when I cannot see. Thirdly, times demand that a contagious Sunday school continues to communicate a contagious Christianity. The word contagious in today's topic is significant since by definition, it means transmittable by direct or indirect contact. This means a new way of reaching students. Sunday school teachers sharing our faith digital should not be something that creates stress 
or induces worry, but rather this type of evangelism should be an authentic part of how we as Christians minister to the church and the non-churched. In other words, it should be our main goal to be a contagious Christian, spreading our love for the gospel and Jesus by the new normal, virtual. Sunday school teachers, we must be open-minded to accept our limitations in technology. Think about what God allowed to take place in Philippians 4, 15 through 23 as Paul ministered. This is evident of what being a contagious Christian is all about. This is amazing because all of this happened without the help of any of the modern transportation and communication technology that we have come to depend on. In the Christian Education Informer, Again, December the 2020 through February 2021, Dr. Alvin Love, Technology Ministering Coordinator for the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated, made the following statement. Virtual meetings and virtual learning is different from classroom and in-person gatherings. As National Baptists, we must be able to translate our offerings from the classroom to video, from in-person to online. We must, however, make the shift in ways that inspire our members to participate in the process. Uninspiring content is a barrier to learning. We must meet our students where they are, value where they are, and encourage them to move forward. The world of technology does try our souls, except Sunday school teachers, that teaching virtually is a different evangelism style. Through this style, teachers may be confrontational, intellectual, testimonial, and invitational. One of our own members of the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated, Dr. Mary E. McConnell stated in her book, Effective Teaching Practices. Many churches today have individuals in their congregations who are computer savvy and have expertise in computer and information technology. Seek out and utilize these members of your congregation and their resources to help become a virtual contagious Christian because both saved and lost people need to hear God's word. Also, our Sunday School Publishing Board of the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated offers classes in Zoom training. In addition, the coordinator for this region, Dr. Michael Minor, offers classes in Zoom training. The question may be asked, what does all this have to do with me as a Sunday school teacher? According to Isaiah 35 and 1, it means the wilderness and the dry land will be glad. The desert will rejoice and blossom with wild flowers. The final point in today's topic a contagious Sunday school continuing to communicate a contagious Christianity is the world needs it. There was something special about that early church 
that was attracting people to Jesus. These Christians had something that could be caught. It was contagious, and many, many people started following Jesus as a result of it. If the following six points from Mark Mettenbell and others in the book Becoming a Contagious Christian are employed in our daily practice, I tr truly believe that the word would spread, that God's world is sure to be impacted by them. They are love. The Bible makes it clear that we must be motivated by genuine love and concern for others. Authenticity. Our friends need to see a real difference in us. We don't have to be perfect, but we must genuinely seek to follow and honor God in our daily lives. Relationship. It is important that these friendships be no strings attached, meaning we'll still love and care about them whether they ever agree with our understanding of God or not. Actions and words. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Process. To be effective, we shouldn't rush a person in his or her special journey. And the last one, partnership. God rarely used just one Christian to bring someone through the process. If our hearts are sincere, God will use us together as a team to communicate his purpose of grace and redemption. The world needs us to communicate to them virtually as well as in person. Peter said to be prepared in 1 Peter 3.15. Paul said to be wise in the way you act towards outsiders and make the most of every opportunity. Colossians 4 and 5. Without clear communicating of the gospel, the world will not know what to put faith in. The world would not know to put faith in Jesus Christ. Ultimately, today's topic, a contagious Sunday school, continuing to communicate a contagious Christianity. It's too important. Christ said it. Times demand it. The world needs it. Has to do with evangelism. Evangelism should be an authentic part of how we as Christians conduct our lives. In other words, it should be our main goal to be a contagious Christian, spreading our love for the gospel and Jesus by the way we live our lives and interact with others. We must remember, one writer said, every moment is an opportunity to be a contagious Christian.